Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and in this video we are going to break down all the ways that Fuji cameras are different than all the other cameras on the market. Don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. I guarantee you will enjoy it. Also, join my group on Facebook. It's called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. Nice community there. And follow me on Instagram, at Boo Ray Perry. I post examples of my work, and I also post a lot of funny stuff. So you'll like having me in your feed. I promise. All right, we're going to talk about Fuji today. And when I was making this video, I had to come up with a clever name, right? you got to have that hook. you got to have that clickbait. So I was going to say... Uh, what makes Fuji awesome? What makes Fuji great? Fuji, the best camera ever. <laughs> and I, I've done that before with other videos. It's kind of a necessary evil that you have to do here on YouTube. But I don't like doing it because I don't really feel that way. I use Fuji. I shoot Fuji. I love Fuji. But I honestly believe that every single camera manufacturer has a fantastic camera. It's almost impossible to buy a bad camera nowadays. They're just different. So what you really need to do if you're looking at different cameras and trying to figure out you know, which manufacturer you want to go with is just look at the differences in each one and then try and figure out which one is the right one for you so i've got some experience with fuji if you're familiar with my channel i make a lot of uh, videos about fuji so in this video i'm going to break it down for you and go step by step on some of the things that i think make fuji different than canon and sony and nikon and you can decide for yourself if these things are important to you all right let's get started the first thing we have to talk about is APS-C sensors because this is really the game changer. There's no reason for you to even be looking at Fuji if you're not interested in using an APS-C sensor. There's all kinds of different sensor sizes sensor sizes that you can uh, get on your camera. Uh, the most common one is full frame. People love full frame cameras and Sony and Nikon and Canon, they all make full frame cameras. And then there's micro four thirds, which is even smaller than APS-C and uh, Olympus users, for example, use micro four thirds cameras. Uh, but then there's APS-C. Uh, which is smaller than full frame and larger than uh, micro four thirds. And APS-C is also made by all the major camera manufacturers, Sony, Canon, Nikon, they all make APS-C, but Fuji only makes APS-C. They make one other sensor and that's medium format, which is a really big sensor and the camera is really, really cool and I would love to have one, but it's kind of a niche camera. Uh, there aren't many photographers who say, I've absolutely got to have a medium format camera or I can't do my job. Uh, the real reason that people come to Fuji is for the APS-C sensor. So before we even get started, I can shut you down right here. If you have convinced yourself that you have to shoot full frame, then this video isn't for you because Fuji simply doesn't make a full frame camera. But if you're interested in looking at full frame versus APS-C, ah, you have to look at Fuji because even though all the other manufacturers make APS-C, Fuji is the only one that's exclusive to it. And this exclusivity to APS-C means that they have a lot of benefits over the other camera manufacturers. So let's talk about some of those benefits now. Without a doubt, the biggest single benefit that you get by going to Fuji is that you get a large selection of lenses that are specifically made for APS-C sensors. Now, this is important to understand. APS-C sensor lenses are made specifically for APS-C sensor cameras, okay? Right. But you can actually put a lens that is made for a full frame camera onto an APS-C camera if you want to. I don't even know if you would technically say that it's made for a full frame camera, but you can put that lens on APS-C camera. Sure. The difference is because there's a crop factor involved with these lenses that if you get a 24 to 70 millimeter lens and you want a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, and if you buy that lens and you put it on an APS-C camera, it's no longer a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. It's now like a, a 35 to 105 millimeter lens because there's a crop factor. So what you really want to do if you're going to go full into an APS-C sensor system is you want to buy lenses that are specifically made for crop sensor cameras. And those lenses will have wider, uh, not wider, shorter focal lengths to compensate for the crop factor. So for example, if you want a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, you'll buy an 18 to 55 millimeter APS-C lens, which will be the equivalent of like a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Does that make sense? So when it comes to the lineup for their lenses, 
when you look at Sony, when you look at Canon, um, they make plenty of lenses for their APS-C cameras, but what they don't do is make wide open zooms, or at least a lot of them. Now, I wanna say this right off the bat. If I'm wrong about this, if I say something here that I'm, I've got this wrong, please go down in the comments and correct me and everybody else who's watching this video and point this out because I just did some research and looked around uh, and I'm not perfect. But as near as I can tell, if you're looking for what we call the holy trinity of lenses, which is basically three lenses that will cover the entire focal range from about 16 millimeters to 200 millimeters. This is typically the range of lenses that any event photographer uses. So if you're shooting a weddings or bar mitzvahs and stuff like that, you want to have 16 to 200 millimeter. That's the whole range you want to be able to cover. You want to be able to shoot anything in that range. There's three lenses that will get you there. And on a full frame camera, they will typically be uh, 16 to 35, 24 to 70 and 70 to 200 millimeter lenses three lenses the holy trinity and you typically want them at f 2.8 wide open as wide as you can get a big zoom lens that's your holy trinity i shot weddings for years and those were the three lenses that i took to every single wedding now if you want those lenses from fuji no problem fuji's got them they've got that range of lenses at f 2.8 but if you want those lenses from Canon or from Sony, you're gonna be out of luck. Because as near as I can tell, while they do make a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent at f2.8, they don't make the other lenses at f2.8. They make them, just not at f2.8. They make them at like 4.5 or 5.6 or somewhere like that, but not at f2.8. Again, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But I went to the websites and I went and looked and I couldn't find these lenses. It seems to me that if you are shooting Sony or Canon and you want to have the Holy Trinity, you're gonna have, if you want to have it at 2.8, you're going to have to go to an outside manufacturer like Sigma to get the lens that you want. Sigma makes great lenses, but it is different getting a Sigma lens for your kit than it is having a lens that is made by the manufacturer of the camera. Not necessarily a deal breaker, but... It shows you a little bit about the commitment that these companies have to that particular format. Fuji is committed to APS-C. They're all in on APS-C. So they have an impressive, extensive lineup of lenses for that sensor. And that is probably the number one thing that sets Fuji apart from all of the other manufacturers, their dedication to APS-C. Another thing that Fuji has that it could be something you don't care one lick about, but it's a thing that a lot of people love, is the Fuji film simulations. Fuji has built-in film simulations into their cameras. Now, this is important because Fuji is the only camera manufacturer that makes film. You know, Canon doesn't make film. Sony doesn't make film. Nikon doesn't make film. But Fuji does. They've been making film for a long time. And if there's one thing that people who make film understand, it's color science. They understand color science. They know everything about color, how to make colors look a certain way. They know all that stuff and they have a deep, deep knowledge of it. So they have made film simulations in their cameras that mimic films that they actually manufacture. So if you want to have uh, Eternal, if you want to have Providia, Provia, if you want to have all these different films, if you want to have the look of these films, you can get them automatically right there in your camera just by selecting that specific film simulation. And let me tell you, people love this. People love this. Professional photographers, I don't know that they use a lot of the simulations as much as the hobbyists do. But the hobbyists, the street photographers, oh man, there are just tons of websites that are dedicated to these film simulations and ways to tweak them and make them look different and give you different colors and different looks. I personally use one called Classic Chrome and that is my, my look. I shoot everything in classic chrome. I shoot my weddings, I shoot my headshots, I shoot it all in classic chrome. That has become my look. Right, The look of a Blu-ray picture is classic chrome. So I absolutely love these filming simulations. And if I ever moved away from Fuji, I would lose that. And I don't want to lose it. So it's one of the little things, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the little hooks. Once it gets you in, it kind of keeps you. So film simulations are kind of cool. And check them out if you're looking at different camera brands and trying to pick one. Probably the single biggest thing that stands out when people look at Fuji cameras is the style and design of the cameras. Uh, Fuji decided some years ago 
that they wanted to stick with a more retro design in their flagship lines. Uh, they have two flagship cameras, which is kind of odd for Fuji. They have the X-H line, which looks more like a traditional camera. And by traditional, I mean cameras that have come out in the last 20 years. And then they have the X-T line. And the X-T line looks more like a traditional camera from 30 years ago right? XT cameras have giant knobs on them. Uh, they're wonderful if you're just starting out in photography because the exposure triangle is right there where you can see it. You can see your ISO, you can see your shutter speed, a big knob for each one right there on the camera. Uh, another thing that Fuji does that's different is that they have aperture rings on the lenses of the camera. So you can change your aperture by turning the ring on the front of the camera. Other cameras don't have that. You change the aperture on the body of the camera not on the ring now you can set up your fuji camera so that you actually do set it on the body just like every other camera if you want to but if you want to do it old school if you want to do it on the ring right there you can it's a nice little cool thing that fuji does but these knobs and this look this classic look to fuji this is a big attraction point for people who come to Fuji cameras. A lot of people come to Fuji specifically because of that. Like they don't care about anything else. It's nice, it's great, they have a big lens lineup, but really what it's about is when they pick that camera up for the first time and they look at it, they go, this is cool. This is great. This makes me feel good. I wanna shoot with this camera. And you can't discount that. You really can't. I can't tell you enough, if you're going and you're, and you're starting out for the first time and you're trying to pick someone to go with, that if you just look at statistics and figures and charts to pick which manufacturer you want to go with, you're really missing something important. You need to own a camera that is a joy in your hand. You want a camera that you want to pick up or else you won't pick it up. You won't. You're like, oh, we're going out for the day. Huh, do, I want to lug, do I want to lug my camera with me? I don't know. You know, it's just a tool, right? And then you won't pick it up. But if this is your camera, right, and you just love it, you just love the way it looks and you love looking at it and you love having it in your hand, then you'll take it with you. And that will give you more opportunity to shoot and it will make you a better photographer. So don't discount style when you are looking at different cameras and be sure you get some Fuji cameras into your hands. And this is also true. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. This is also true. <laughs> I'm going to leave I'm going to leave that part in. This is also true uh because of your hand size. Let me tell you that straight up. Your hand size is important because the Fuji XT line, it's a beautiful line of cameras, but if you have big hands like me, they're kind of small in your hand. So you want to check that out. You want to be sure and hold these cameras in your hand. One of the reasons that I switched to the X-H2, which I thought I had behind me, but I don't, is that it has a bigger grip and a more traditional grip. So as much as I love the style of Fuji cameras, I actually ended up moving away from that style because I needed the convenience of a bigger grip because I was going to be holding the camera all day. So style is important, but comfort is important too. So I can't, I can't stress this enough. Get the camera in your hands. Go down to a camera store right? Try these cameras out before you buy one. The last positive thing that I want to talk about when it comes to Fuji being different is the brand new 40 megapixel sensor. This is actually a really big deal. People haven't been talking about this enough, I don't think. Uh, Fuji sensor, fantastic sensor, 26 megapixel sensor, uh, has been a benchmark great APS-C sensor for years. And just last year, they came out with a brand new sensor that is a 40 megapixel sensor. And this is the largest sensor in terms of megapixels that you can get on an APS-C camera. It's never been done before. No one else has a 40 megapixel sensor. And this is a big deal. It's like this, they pushed a big boundary here. No one else is doing this. Surely you would think that it would be Sony that would do it first. Sony makes a lot of the sensors that are in other people's cameras. No, no, it was Fuji. Why? Because Fuji's all in with APS-C. They want to be in the forefront of APS-C technology, so they made sure they were the first manufacturer to come out with a 40 megapixel sensor. So if you're interested in more megapixels, Fuji is the only way to go when it comes to APS-C. All right, finally, I talked about how Fuji is different, and everything I've said so far has been great ways in which Fuji is different and things that I love, but I would be remiss if I didn't point out that Fuji is also different than the other manufacturers in a couple of ways that may not be so great. 
First of all, they have the worst autofocus in the industry. Yeah, I'll say it. There's no doubt that if you're looking for a camera that is going to find the eye and snap to focus and do it fast, Fuji is not going to be the best camera. No, Canon's going to be better. I think Sony is probably the best. And Nikon's doing very well too. But it's pretty much acknowledged that Fuji has the worst autofocus. Now, for me, that's not a big problem because... Having eye snap autofocus is new anyway. I shot for years without having that at all. So just having it at all is a cool thing. So it doesn't bother me that it's a half a millisecond slower than it is on Sony. Uh, it can be something that's important though. If you're shooting video, for example, you want to stay in focus on the person while they're moving, you, then yeah, that's going to be a big deal. So if autofocus and the ability to hunt and find and find the eye and lock to it instantly, if that's really important to you, Fuji probably not the camera for you. You need to be looking at Sony more than likely. So autofocus on Fuji is not the best. And the other thing you need to know about Fuji, Sony, uh, Fuji is that they don't have the largest footprint in the industry. Everybody's bigger than Fuji. Everybody, right? Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji, Fuji. So if you go to a convention, there's going to be like the giant Canon booth and the giant, you know, uh, Nikon booth maybe. or Well, Nikon doesn't go to conventions that much anymore. The giant Sony booth. And then there's the Fuji booth, which is smaller, right? But the folks at the Fuji booth are great and they're there to help you, you know. But there's other side, you know, there's other effects that come with that. For example, if you're not the biggest camera manufacturer in the world, then the people who make accessories and third party things like that, they don't necessarily make them for you right away. Like if you're making software that works with a camera, or some accessory that works with a particular type of camera, you're probably going to make it for Canon cameras or Nikons or Sonys before you get around to Fuji because Canon and Nikon and Sony, they have more cameras in the market, more people that can buy your product. So that can be a little bit of a drawback. That being said, I haven't had a hard time finding accessories and certainly not a hard time finding lenses for my Fuji because a lot of the lens manufacturers like, say, Tamron and uh, Sigma, they make a lot of lenses for APS-C because they're smaller and they're cheaper and easier to make. And so that's what they want to make. They're after a third party market. So I haven't experienced a lot of trouble in finding things for my Fuji cameras, but it is something for you to think about. All right, so that's it, right? That's all the ways in which Fuji is different. And there's other ways too. And I encourage you to go down in the comments and tell me what those ways are. Please do. Uh, but those are the main features. If you're trying to figure out which camera manufacturer you want to go with, the first thing you need to decide is, do I want to be APS-C? And if the answer is yes, then you absolutely have to look at Fuji. You've got to look at Fuji versus the other big three before you make that decision. Hey, don't forget to throw me a like and throw me a subscription. It helps me to keep this channel alive. And also, all of my gear, everything that I carry, all my accessories are all available on my website. And I've got the link down, down, uh, downstairs there in the uh, comments. And if you go there and you click on one of those links and you buy one of those things, I get a couple of dollars. And it, it helps me to keep this channel going because I should be working right now. And instead, I'm making this YouTube video about Fuji. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you soon.